Okay, everyone, welcome back to my video. With this video, we are going to discuss the November 2025 uh, TOK prescribed title. Mm. Okay, so as usual, there are six prescribed title. And with this video, we're going to go over the summary of the, this titles. No. So this is the title number one. Let's say this is prescribed title number one. So for historians and artists, the conventions limit or expand their ability to produce knowledge discussed with the reference to history and the art. So it doesn't give us any freedoms, right, in terms of choosing AOK. -okay. Uh, we must use uh, history and the arts as our AOK, -okay, two AOKs. And the, the key concepts that you need to focus are the conventions as written in the question, okay, and then the knowledge production and historical methodology and artistic movement. I think these are the two additional points that you have to uh, focus with these titles, okay, uh, because of the, the produce knowledge or the knowledge production part, okay. Those the conventions and knowledge production are the key points with this prescribed title. So possible arguments that you can make is that if you're claiming that the conventions uh, expand knowledge, okay, then you can say that conventions expand knowledge by providing structures. Examples that you can use is the historical method, okay, also the artistic rules like perspective in the Renaissance. And then the counterclaim that you can make is that conventions can limit creativity, right? Um, and also you can go, you know, don't forget, you can go the other way too, right? But the example that you can use for this kind of claim is the artistic censorship and historical biases, okay? And the evaluation that you can make with this title is uh, some conventions are necessary for communication and progress, while others may restrict the innovation. So, so it really depends on how you're going to make your claim. So depends on how you're making uh, your research question or the claim, you know, the way you approach your counterclaim or the evaluation will be different, right? So let's visit those in the next video. Then let's talk about the prescribed title 2, DT2. So what is the relationship between knowing and understanding? Discuss with the reference to two areas of knowledge. So with this prescribed title, the key points that you need to focus or the key terms that you need to focus are the uh, knowledge because of knowing right and then the understanding okay and then when we talk about knowing or the knowledge we are referring to the factual procedural and ex experiential okay and then when you say understanding we are referring to conceptual holistic graphs Right, those are the things that you can use, and because of this reason, uh, the two AOKs that I'm suggesting you to use is the mathematics and human science. Okay, and then the possible argument that you can make is that if you're saying that okay, though knowledge is distinct from understanding, then you can say that the knowing, the factual knowledge, is distinct from understanding the deep comprehension and then the examples that you can use is the memorizing the math formula versus versus the conceptualizing calculus okay and the counterclaim that you can make in for this case is that some forms of knowledge inherently require understanding for example like historical interpretation or the ethical dilemmas okay and then the the ways to you ways that you can use to evaluate this claim is the you know I, identifying that the relationship is complex and knowledge without understanding is shallow uh, understanding often based on knowledge then let's talk about the prescript titles number three so it says that should knowledge in an area of the knowledge be pursued for its own sake rather than for its potential application. Discuss with a reference to mathematics and one other area of the knowledge. So in this case, we had to choose this one other 
area of the knowledge, right? So uh, for that reason, you know, I'm going to suggest you to use natural science as your one other AOK on top along with the mathematics, okay? Uh, and then the key points or the key concepts that you need to focus with this prescribed title is the pure and the applied knowledge, okay? And then the instrumental value, and then the intrinsic motivation. For those who are not used to the, the word intrinsic, that means the like, you know, uh, essential motivation or you know, motivations that are naturally uh, you know, belongs to you, okay? Or they belong to uh, knowledge. That's what, you, that's what that word means, okay? So it says that should knowledge in an AOK be pursued for its own sake rather than for its potential application, right? So, uh, you know, key points that you need to focus in the title is the, the sake and the potential application. However, you know, like, you know, with this title, you have to think beyond what this title is, is actually uh, implying, right? So that's the reason why I'm saying the key concepts that you have to use with these titles are the pure versus applied, applied knowledge, instrumental value, and the, the essential motivation, right? Uh, that's the reason why they're suggesting mathematics as one A, one A OK, and then asking you to choose another A OK. And then for that reason, Exact for exactly the same reason, I'm asking you to use the natural science. Okay, the possible arguments that you can make with this title is the um, pure knowledge has the essential value, like number theory in maths, right? The, that can be a good example. And the counterclaim that you can make is that many knowledge systems gain significance through application. For example, mathematical proofs leading to encryption, right? Those are the good. Those can be a good example. So the way you should approach to evaluate this title or the, the claim, this claim is that a balance is needed. Many discoveries start as pure knowledge but gain application over time. So you know, because of this reason, it's good to approach this title like you know, to what extent question. Okay, then let's do PT4 or the prescribed title number four. So we finally have a question that has a to what extent within the, the question format, okay? So to what extent do you agree that however the methods of an AOK change, the scope remains the same? Answer with a reference to two areas of knowledge. So it is asking us to choose the, the AOKs that we are going to use, right? So for this case, I'm actually suggesting you to use the uh, natural science and history as your two AOKs because you know you will find a lot of uh, like examples to use, right? Also, the key terms that I want you guys to focus are the the method and then the scope. Okay, but when you say method of an AOK, we are referring to the scientific method or historical analysis, right? Because I'm actually saying natural science and history as two AOKs for this prescribed title. And in terms of scope, I'm referring to the range of the inquiry within these two AOKs. Okay, so the possible claim that you can make with this prescribed title is that the scope remains consistent uh, despite methodological evolution. So examples that you can use is the historical scope remains about interpreting the past even as digital tools change methods. And then the counterclaim that you can use is that some methodological changes expand the scopes, like you know, DNA evidence are uh, revolutionizing the historical understanding, right? And then the uh, the way to evaluate this claim or this prescript title can be like you know some uh, AOKs maintain stable scopes while others are transformed. By the new methods. Okay. Then let's talk about the uh, prescribed title number five. So in the pursuit of the knowledge, is it possible or even desirable to set aside temporally what we already know? So discuss with the reference to the natural science and one other area of knowledge. 
Okay, so let's talk about this one other area of the knowledge first. Okay, so here I wrote it ethics. However, what you need to focus is the human science. And when you think about the human science, try to focus on the ethics part of the human science. Okay, think about uh, is it possible or even desirable to set aside temporarily what we already know to pursue knowledge in human science? or in terms of ethics within the human science. That's what you need to think about. Okay, so the key points uh, that we need to focus with this title is the set aside temporally, right? But it doesn't really mean anything. So I actually wrote the key concepts here. So I want you to think about the paradigm shift, confirmation biases, and the cognitive flexibility. Those are the key concepts that you need to think about with this title. Okay, so the claim that you can make with this title is that you know scientific revolution often requires setting aside previous knowledge. For example, Einstein's relativity challenging Newtonian physics. That can be a good example. A uh, counterclaim can be some knowledge should not be abandoned, like you know ethical principles in medicine or the in psychology, right? Those are the those can be a good example. And then uh, when you evaluating this title, think about temporarily setting aside knowledge can lead to the breakthroughs, but some foundational knowledge is indispensable, right? Uh, these are the ways that you can take to evaluate this prescribed title. Lastly, prescribed title number six is empathy an attribute that is equally important for a historian and a human scientist. Discuss with the reference to history and the human science. Because the title says the historian and human scientist, we have to use the history and human science as our AO case. And the, the key points that you have to focus with this title is empathy and then the uh, and the objectivity, interpretative analysis, right? Because it says like is empathy an attribute that is equally important you know like you have to look beyond what these terms mean right so that's the reason why i'm saying like you know think about the objectivity and interpretative analysis so when you're making a claim for this prescribed title uh you can say the empathy is essential for both a your case you know examples that you can use is the historical narratives and then the ethnographic research require understanding perspectives. Okay, the counterclaims that you can use to make an argument for this title is the excessive empathy may introduce bias, like you know, historian uh, distorting events, right, or the social scientists lacking objectivities. And then the ways that you can uh, used to evaluate this title is that a think of, thinking about a balance is necessary. Empathy aids understanding but must be moderated by the critical uh, analysis. So you can see from the ways to evaluate this title, you know, this title is typical yes or no question. Okay. Okay, so now let's talk about how to answer this question. So number one, do conventions limit or expand? This is your typical yes or no question, okay? Or you can even answer it with the to what extent, okay? Number two, what is the relationship between knowing and understanding? This is something that you need to give your answer or give your opinion. That's what you need to do. For number three, should knowledge in an AOK be pursued for its own sake? So this is your again your typical yes or no question, but also you can answer it as to what extent. Okay. Number four, to what extent? This is to your to what extent question. So you know we don't even have to worry about anything else, right? Number five, this is your typical yes or no question. You can even uh, put this question with to what extent. Number six, is empathy an attribute? This is your typical yes or no question. 
just like I told you. Um, so this is the end of this video and then uh, for upcoming TOK videos, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dissect these prescribed titles individually and give you uh, more information on how to use the, uh, the key terms and then what kind of examples that you should use in your essay. And that's it for today and stay tuned for my next videos.